Ooh, ooh, I got a build for you guys today, but I want to start out with its theme. The theme is the four horsemen of the apocalypse. I'm going to do a build for each of the horsemen. If you don't know what the horsemen are, we have famine, we have conquest, we have violence, and we've got death. Today, I'm going to be doing the famine horsemen, but if you want to see all of the other builds right now, you can find them on our Patreon. Otherwise, you're going to have to wait. Now, the famine build is pretty sweet. It specializes in getting and giving your teammates advantage in melee combat. And I'm going to flavor that like we are making them hungry. That's why they have advantage. Not for the mechanical reasons, but because we have an aura of hunger that we just dispense to all of our allies. So flavor-wise, we're going to feel very Knoll-like. If you guys don't know, Knolls have eternal hunger. That's part of their flavor. So I'm going to run with that. We're going to be a Beastmaster Ranger, and we're going to use Beast of the Land. Our land animal is going to be a hyena. We are going to be a kobold, but I'm going to reskin it to be very Knoll-like, that we are more like a hyena than we are a dragon. Now that we have the groundwork laid out, let's get into the build. As for our stats, we're going to need 14 in dexterity to make sure our medium armor is maximized. Past that, we're going to want to maximize wisdom first. We want that as high as possible and constitution second. Everything else is just your choice flavor. Now, because we're a beast master, if you guys didn't know, the beast master's animal companion actually scales off of wisdom, not dexterity, which is why we're going to take druidic warrior. That way we can pick up the shillelagh cantrip and, and basically become a really efficient ability class because now we can focus on wisdom and not have to focus on dexterity and wisdom which is going to make us a better spellcaster, going to make our beasts better, and we're honestly not sacrificing that much. We're sacrificing either plus one AC or plus two damage per hit, and that's worth it to me to have excellent spells, excellent beast companion, and just to be an all-around great, efficient character. Now, once we get our animal companion, it's medium and we're small, so we can ride it. It is our mount. Furthermore, our beast has a chance, using our wisdom save, which we're maximizing, to knock enemies prone when we charge them down an attack. So we're going to give all of our melee allies an advantage and that's going to begin a theme here. We specialize in mobbing enemies in a melee group, just like Knolls. So someone with great weapon master on our team is absolutely going to love us because we're going to enable their accuracy to get those big, great weapon master attacks. But even if they don't have that, they're still going to appreciate us constantly setting them up with advantage. And we're just starting with that theme. That theme's going to continue. It's going to continue with Entangle. Entangle, because we're maximizing wisdom, is a very efficient spell. It helps us deal with mobs, which normally isn't our specialty, as well well as enable our playstyle where we're getting these advantage attacks off. Really dope. Continuing this theme, we have Draconic Cry from the Kobold, which is going to give all of our teammates advantage on all attacks for a full round. Now this is going to require a bonus action. So once we hit fifth level, we want to use this with our bonus action. We want to give away one of our attacks to give our beast an attack, which is a little known thing you can do with Beastmaster. You don't have to use your bonus action. You can actually use one of your attacks instead of a bonus action, which sometimes we're going to want to do. Now another spell that's going to be really important to us is Summon Beast. I'm going to be summoning another land-based creature, another hyena. I'm going to take Fae Touched at fourth level. Main reason is for the Misty Step. Why? Because I think it's really cool. I don't know how uh, useful this will be, but I think it's so dope. We can Misty Step from our Beast Companion to our Beast Summon, and I think that's just really cool. And in the right circumstance, can give us a crazy amount of mobility. We can run using our 40 feet of movement speed from our Animal Companion, then we can Misty Step 30 feet onto our Beast Companion, who then can move 40 more feet to get us all the way over there, then we can jump off and move 15 more feet. Our mobility, it's it's not going to line up often, but potentially is really far. Overall, mostly just cool. Now, as far as the spell we take for the first level spell from Fate Touch, I'm thinking Bless. It continues our theme of making us super accurate, so we can throw it on our great weapon master fighter, we can throw it on our animal companion, we can throw it on ourselves, just to make sure we're getting those attacks off all the time. Additionally, Bless protects its own concentration, which is nice because concentration is one of our fatal flaws. We don't have a crazy, insane constitution save, and we are up close, and we are using concentration save, so if I'm going to give this character weakness, it's right there. So let's talk about rounding this character out. We do get a second cantrip from being a druidic warrior, and I'm going to take Thorn Whip. That gives us a mid-ranged option out to 30 feet, and I'm going to especially be using it to try and take advantage of that 10-foot pole. My favorite use case for this is if we're fighting someone else mounted, if our DM's a badass and lets us have a mount on mount battle, we can use Thorn Whip to whip them off their own mount, maybe even Misty Step on top of it, and then roll with it. Just really cool combat potential here. Now, as a kobold, we also get the ability to either get a cantrip to get some skills or to be resistant to the frightened condition. Now the ones I'm looking at are resistant to the frightened condition or a cantrip. If I don't know anything about my team, I'm taking the cantrip. I'm going to grab something like Firebolt so we have a 120 foot range option just to increase our range efficiency. However, if we have a bunch of teammates who excel at ranged combat, I might take the time to take the resistance to frighten to make me a better frontliner that is less susceptible to being crowd controlled. Now knowing your team beforehand can actually be a big deal with this build. If you know you have an ally who's going to be taking 
great weapon master, this build should instantly, ooh, that's a great opportunity to run this build. But you don't necessarily have to, it's just gonna synergize really well. So what are we? Well, we are a pack of hyenas hell-bent on chewing down single targets. We specialize in swarming single targets and making their life a living hell, and we enable our allies to do the same. But we round ourselves out. We round ourselves out with crowd control through things like entangle. We round ourselves out with range, with firebolt and thorn whip. We have excellent saves. We have the dexterity covered, we have the wisdom covered, we're focused on constitution as well, even though I still consider that probably our biggest weakness. Overall, an extremely well-rounded character with extremely interesting fighting style and a cool theme to boot. Overall, I'm super excited about it. But what I want to hear from you guys is how you would run your own famine horsemen or some ideas you have for the other three horsemen. Let me know in the comments down below. Now, if you want to see all other three horsemen right now without having to wait, consider becoming one of our patrons. They get early access to our videos as well as other benefits. If that's interesting to you, check it out. It helps the channel grow and we'd really appreciate it. But other than that, my friends, I hope you all have an amazing day. You're my favorite and I'll see you on the next one. Peace.